So about a year ago, it was the worst day we have ever had on the farm. It was the day that little barn cat, one of the two barn cats we had here on our farm, she got hit by a car. So she went missing for about 36 hours. And then when we found her, she had a shattered pelvis and a ruptured bladder. She was on the verge of death. But Allison and I rushed her to emergency vets. She got the medical care that she needed. And after an extensive hospital stay, some massive vet bills and generous donations from many, many viewers like you. We were able to save Lil Barn Cat, but part of the price was she could never be a barn cat again and she would have to convert and become a house cat. But now the good news here is she has made an awesome house cat. When I'm inside the house, whether it's editing these videos or working my day job from my home office or even just sitting around on the couch and watching TV, Lil Barn Cat is right there hanging out with me. Now the barn cats on our farm play a really important role. Because we have so many birds on our farm, we have to feed those birds. And when we feed those birds, they like to spread their feed all over the place. And that feed ends up attracting rodents. And having a lot of rodents around your farm is not good. Number one, it's annoying. Number two, it can bring germs and disease and other pests. And number three, having a whole bunch of rodents leads to a lot of animals that are predators of rodents. I'm talking about animals like foxes, bobcats, coyotes, predators who would also attack our birds. And so by adding barn cats into the ecosystem of our farm, we're able to keep the rodent population in balance, which then also keeps the predator population in balance. Now, when we just had our two barn cats, Lil Barn Cat, and Pablo Barncat, AKA Pablo Escobar. They were able to keep things in balance, but at that time we had fewer birds, so that meant less feed, which meant we needed fewer cats. These days we have a lot more birds and we're actually only down to one barn cat. You see, Pablo Barncat is around here on the farm on the regular, patrolling the grounds, helping get rid of rodents, and doing a darn good job too. But admittedly, he's been a little bit overrun by things. Especially back in the winter, we had moles and voles and mice all over the place and it was getting to be a real problem. Luckily, our situation had attracted a new barn cat into the mix. Some of you guys might be familiar with Hobo Barn Cat. So over the course of the winter, Hobo Barn Cat and Pablo Barn Cat kept things in check and they kept the population of the rodents right where I wanted them. But to be honest, Hobo Barn Cat, as much as I tried to make him our cat, was never our cat. And he came and went as he pleased. And it's been several months since I've seen any sign of Hobo Barn Cat. That alongside when's the puppy coming and when the cattle are coming are the most asked questions here at Goldshaw Farm. So yeah, Hobo Barn Cat hasn't been around, so it's really only been Pablo Barn Cat. But one of the goals that I had for our farm this year was that I wanted to add two more barn cats into the mix. You know, I wasn't quite sure where they were gonna come from. I wasn't quite sure how I was gonna get them, but I clearly had a plan of adding two female barn cats here on the farm. Maybe they would be sisters. Maybe they would just be two separate cats that I put together. But in order for Pablo Barn Cat not to feel too threatened, and feel like some sort of male intruders were invading his space, I needed to find a way to introduce two barn cats. And well, a couple of weeks ago, a friend of Allison's answered an ad on Front Porch Forum. For those who are not familiar, Front Porch Forum is like Vermont's mashup of Craigslist with Nextdoor. It's kind of the place where everybody goes to swap and trade and ask for stuff and gripe and moan about their neighbors. It's one of those awesome things that's very uniquely Vermont. And so Allison's friend answered this ad that basically had this barn cat that had just given kittens and the owner wanted to try to find a way to get rid of the mom and the kittens. And so Allison's friend took on this family of six kittens and one mom and she had been raising them for the last six weeks. And well, the moment that Allison and I heard about this situation, we were like, yeah, we got to get on the kitten train here and we want to get some of these animals. But I also saw the upside of adding a mature cat into the mix. You know, when you're raising barn cats, starting with kittens can be a little bit hard because they require a lot more supervision. But as I thought about it, the idea of having a mother and daughter daughter cat here on the farm might be the perfect mix because the young kitten could spend the time with the mom and get trained up and learn the ways of the world. And they'd also be very, very simpatico as far as cats go. And so earlier today, two adorable tabby cats just showed up here at Goldshaw Farm. They were very nervous and were kind of confused by what was going on, but that's totally understandable. And I did everything I possibly could to try to make them comfortable. Now at this moment, it's probably good for me to stop and explain to you guys how you train a barn cat. Because for those who are not familiar, there are a few things Things you should consider. Like number one, you need to actually train them to your barn. And typically the way you train a barn cat to the barn 
is you keep it in a crate for two or three weeks so that it learns that this new spot is its home. You know, like if we just took the barn cats right now and set them free, they would wander off into the woods. They'd probably actually try to find their way back to the, the house of Allison's friend, which is like the next town over. And so what I did was I actually prepped a room up inside our barn and made sure it had a litter box and water and food and bedding and everything that they would need to be comfy and cozy. And I gotta tell you, this setup is much better than what I've done in the past. You know, when we were training up Pablo and Lil Barncat, we used just a large dog crate and kept their litter in the same space. You know, the crate was pretty small. It was like uh, two and a half feet by four feet. And so they had to stay in that crate full time for weeks on end. And actually in the case of Lil Barncat, we kept her at least at night in there for, oh gosh, it was like about two or three months before she finally got set free because we were so worried about her. You know, she was just this tiny little kitty cat and I didn't want to sit her off into the wild and have her get munched on by a coyote before she was ready. But for the new mama barn cat and her baby, the two of them are actually in this old room that is in our barn that I believe they used to use as a chicken coop. It's a really good size. I think it's like about 10 feet by about I don't know, 14, 15 feet. So they're gonna have plenty of space. As I took them up in there, they were starting to explore and I spent some time just this afternoon hanging out with them and just getting comfortable with them. I gotta say for a barn cat, mama barn cat is very sociable. Pablo barn cat is still adjusting to them a little bit. Like he has been hanging out outside the door of the room that they're in up in the barn. He and mama barn cat are starting to growl at each other a little bit, but that's totally normal and I'm not concerned about it at all. I'm just gonna give them just a little bit of time and I bet you by the time I let her out in, I don't know, two or three weeks, they're gonna be fine. Now I'm sure you guys are actually interested in meeting these two new barn cats, so uh, let's head on into the barn and say hello. Starting to get dark here in the barn. Hey, barn kitties. Hey, mommy. Hey, little one. I come bring presents. Come here. Oh yeah, that's a good mom. Yeah, you like that? I'm a friend, I'm cool. So yeah, this is baby cat and mommy cat. We're still trying to land on some names. We've got a couple of ideas, but still not 100% decided. Here, you wanna try some? Allison's friend actually had a name for the kitten that I really like. I don't want to give it away and like shift the thinking that you guys have, but I'd be curious for your ideas as well. Oh, look at that big stretch. You're like a little leopard. You want to try a little treat? Mom's munching on the treats. Don't eat them all, Ma. If you want, you can eat them out of my hand. How about that? So we want to give them names that are like mother-daughter names because that feels more appropriate. Did you guys look at this little one? Isn't she just adorable? Yes, you are. So just to be really clear with you guys, I am not a cat person at all, but it's hard to resist these little ones that are adorable. And mom is a sweet cat too. Yes, you are, gal. This little spot right here, because it's protected and sort of hidden, as well as because it's got the old straw in it, has definitely become their favorite place to hang out. Just to give you guys a full tour of this spot, like I said, it's a pretty good sized room that they're in. Um, it's got these little holding cells. I think back in the day, this used to be used as a brooder. I might in the future actually turn it into a brooder once again. You'll notice I actually just recently had electricity put in up here. As I was getting this spot cat proof, I actually put up a bunch of chicken wire to make sure that they couldn't sneak out. So I put some over there, as well as put some up over here on the window. I set up this spot thinking that this might be their favorite place to hang out. So that's where their food and water is. 
They also have that little box if they want to sleep in there. They got one of the old cat beds right there. Oh, there's so much space for you to run around and explore, huh, little one? Got a leaf? They also have a litter box, which it doesn't look like they've used just yet, but they've only been up here a couple of hours. As far as litter goes, I don't use the regular cat litter anymore. I actually prefer using those pine pellets these days. There's another box area, which again, I don't quite know what they would use it for, but it's there for them if they wanted it. Checking out the door, little one. I bet you Pablo's on the other side of that. What you doing there, Mr. Pablo Barn Cat? Huh? You realize something's going on inside that room? I'll wait a couple of days before I introduce you to Pablo. But yeah, so there you have it. We have brand new barn cats here at Goldshaw Farm. Follow along and you'll see the little one grow up and you'll see these two get released into the farm. And I'm sure they're gonna have a whole lot of adventures. But right now, I'm just excited to have them here.